I'll be honest, I'm nervous because I'm obsessed with the show and I don't get nervous about it. Really? Yeah, but like I'm obsessed with the show, but I want to know like what can you like tell if you tell us anything about season two because like your character has been through some shit. Oh man, she has been through a lot. And one thing I will say is it is not over yet, unfortunately for Isabel. The first couple episodes are going to see her having to deal with the aftermath of what happened last season. So, you know, finding out that her husband was evil and an alien and using her body to commit murders was bad enough. There is unfortunately more to come for Isabel. It gets worse before it gets better. But the good news is, it does get better. I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel, which I'm thankful for as an actor because the first couple of episodes back, I was just like, oh, oh, we're like getting right into it. I thought maybe, I was like, maybe it'll be like a six months has passed and she'll have had some time to recover. Like, no, we're jumping right back into the moment after we left off season one. So you guys are going to be able to watch us all having to deal with the terrible things that happened at the end of last season. Um, it's going to be really juicy. There's going to be, of course, the like romance and drama, but I think at first it's just we're going to be seeing these characters just reeling from, from all the things that happened at the end of last season. So it's excellent. <laughs> all of the scripts coming out. I just, I'm, we're on, we're starting to get to 206 right now. And I just read the script and I was like, <laughs> I read it in one, it was like when I was reading Harry Potter, it was the same thing that I just opened it and I would like walk around and like making myself toast and like going pee and like going to the movie theater. I'm like, I couldn't put it down. So the writers are doing an incredible job and uh, it's so good. It was a nice short little sound bite of the stadium. <laughs> no, totally. <laughs> like, how do you explain that your husband was gone? Like, he's, he's gone. Like, I mean, I'm assuming he's about his friends. And, like, like how do you explain? Like, how do I say? Yeah, well, he's, he, I think he's, you know, he died. I think that we're going to have to, you know, there's going to be another kind of how these characters deal with how explaining how my husband died. So yeah. Noah's like no longer there and we're gonna yeah. It's another sticky icky for the for the alien siblings, like how do we convey ourselves to the world? And what's gonna happen with Max, my God, I don't know. If only I knew. <laughs> if only. He's here, but he's here as a grip. Yeah, he's here really to just help us move things. Around. They saw how strong he was on set. He's like, very you strong. You can lift things. You know, it's surprisingly not as strong as you think. Looks strong, quite weak. I do want to talk a little bit about um, just the sibling dynamic and sort of how Isabel uses Max as this anchor in her life. And now, um, coming back into season two, that anchor that she really needs as you're doing this journey inward is gone. So how are, um, how does that change the dynamic between Isabel and Michael? Because now I feel like each of them need each other more than ever. Absolutely. I mean, I think Isabel is a person who has always relied on outside forces, particularly men in her life. You know, Noah and Max were these, kind of, she had these kind of codependent relationships with these two guys. And uh, I think it prevented her from really knowing how to stand on her own. So now when we see her ha suddenly being on her own, it's one of these things where you're, it's just you're thrown into the deep end and either you sink or you swim. Right? So I think Isabel at the beginning of the season was really just trying to figure out how she can survive. Um, because she spent her entire life not ever having to, to do it on her own. So it's a really empowering storyline, and I'm so excited to be part of it. But for sure, with Michael, you know, they always have this back and forth. They have this, like, contentious love-hate relationship. They love each other so much, and they also just give each other such a hard time mm -hmm. about heads all the time. Um, but I think this is going to, you know, we, we see that familiar dynamic where I think she needs him and she loves him so much. And also, she's like, Michael! <laughs> you drive me crazy. Um, so we still get that. I mean, I love the scenes that I get to have with Michael Blamas because we always start riffing and we, you know, we get into it and we're just like, we're kind of just like, have a little banter and it becomes very spontaneous and fun and the two of us like to just go at each other and just spar. Um, and that's always fun. So there will be that kind of humor and the tenderness between Isabel and Karen, which is so great. Yeah, can you tease, I mean, you said that there's going to be some heavy stuff, so can you tease us any of the light stuff that's coming on? Any of the light stuff? Yeah, well, I think that first and foremost, there's a lot that has to be dealt with off the end 
end of season one. So once that stuff is kind of, we're, we're you know, kind of wading through all of that supercharged emotional stuff. Um, but the writers do such a good job of keeping humor alive. You know, these yeah. characters are going through literally a superhuman beyond human experiences. Um, but they still remain so grounded and funny, and so there's still always moments between characters that you see um, some things between Isabel and Maria that are really funny, little scenes that you see, you know, two different characters interacting that we don't always get to see together, and when they pop together it's, it you know, always makes for like a fun and unexpected kind of like surprise. Um, so there's lots of humor in it, and I think that as things Progress. We're going to see different relationships coming together that we haven't seen before. So that's been really fun for me to get to work with some other actors that I haven't had as much time with. So I love that. For me, it's always so fun when we see characters that we don't normally see together coming together. I love the episode that I had um, with Michael Trevino where he was, you know, stabbing in the heart. And I hadn't gotten to work with him too much before, but Isabel and Kyle is like a really fun dynamic. You know, she was kind of like sort of flirting with him and sort of like giving him a hard time. And just, like, so um, I think the writers do a really great job of making sure that the audience will be laughing and having those moments of like, oh, yes. yeah. as we're going through the dense stuff. And then, yeah, towards the middle of the season, I think things will really start to open up in a new way. Since it is so dark at times, what do you think was the hardest scene to film? Ooh. The hardest scene that I had to film, which I, I couldn't tell you about because it would be <laughs> such a spoiler, but it, um, there was a week that I had of work that just it landed. As an actor, you really you hope that you go through these, that you hope that you experience it, so that you can do the character justice and really let that be, you know, real. Um, but it can be tough as an actor to have to go through these kinds of things too, because you're putting yourself in situations where you're like, God, I don't, I don't want to imagine with this. I don't want to have to go through this. Um, but off the top, I mean, definitely the feeling of just horror and betrayal of having been married to someone who was lying to you and using you and was, had these sort of evil motives. I think that ickiness of feeling like this is the person that I trusted, this was my husband, I slept in his bed every night, we were, you know, married, and he was lying to me the whole time. So that was definitely something that was very dark, playing off the top, her processing that and realizing, like, wait, wait, wait. Like, so everything that I thought was true was a lie. And the whole time that I thought I was with someone, with someone else. And does that make it like a consensual relationship then? You know, what, it, there was a lot of questions that came up when Curry and I were talking about like the implications of what it means to be with someone who's lying to you. And I shake that off. <laughs> it's like a bubble bath. <laughs> I want to know, can we trust Kyle? Can you trust Kyle? I mean... Me, personally, I feel like I trust Kyle. Don't ask me because the writers have stuff that I don't even know coming down the pipes. My instinct is like, I would I would put my money on Kyle over a, my money on other people because I feel like it's the Valenti code. It's got that Valenti code. What's that? I think he's a double agent. You think he's a double agent? <laughs> Valenti? Oh my god. That's like my theory. I get torn apart for it online. Oh my like, god. I like that theory. <laughs> I've never thought about this. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my god. I need a bubble bath. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. It's such a pleasure talking to you guys. You Have too. a wonderful day. Thank you too.